All right, we are live. Welcome, guys. Thank Hi. you. So I've got Mark Krosh, and I have Harvey Gillen um, of What We Do in the Shadows, a great show on FX. Um, I'm hoping everybody that's watching right now has seen it because it is so funny. We're in season two right now, and it has been just a great continuation of what you guys are doing. So good to have you guys. Thanks, Thanks for man. having us. <laughs> <laughs> I speak for Harvey in all these interviews. That's all right. right. He is Harvey Gillen. <laughs> <laughs> so Harvey, you play Guillermo, and this season, well, really at the beginning of the last season and end of this season, pretty much all the plot has revolved around your character. <laughs> you, you, you're a familiar who wants to be a vampire and is starting to feel this pull that maybe that's not what you were born to be. Um, how has this been for you to kind of be thrust in the middle of everything this season? I mean, honestly, I didn't know that we were going to go in the direction that we did. I think last season for Guillermo, I really just saw him as like, I think I even talked to Mark about this. Like, it was just like, he's just there. He's like, you know, he's the, the reaction to the audience because, you know, um, all the crazy uh, adventures they get into to a human is like what's going on um, but I didn't think that we were going to go in the direction that we did so when I read the finale for season one I was like oh wow that is a huge you know uh, twist um, plot twist and then season two filming I didn't know all the stuff that was going to happen as well so at the table read I found out that I would be doing some stunts and that we're definitely going after this Van Helsing side for uh, story and uh, and it was nice to go in that right because I uh, I usually don't get the opportunity to play um, action stuff and so yeah. um, I hit the gym you know and uh, <laughs> worked out and got better at running upstairs you know without huffing and puffing and I think that was the accomplishment in its in itself is really um, yeah just uh, going up a flight of stairs but uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> nice to just have um, that opportunity for that arc for Guillermo because you know even I was like what's going to happen to him and it was nice to to see this adventure side uh, definitely uh, come forward. I love the accidental action hero that you've turned into. <laughs> <laughs> hero by act by accident, yeah. <laughs> so Mark, your character too, Colin Peterson, has had some unexpected twists. The uh, the romantic episode towards the end of last season was hilarious. Um, I just love the idea of the energy vampire. How fun is Colin to play? Uh, he's super fun. I mean, it's, you know, such a uh, unique character that Jermaine came up with and the writers have really expanded on. Um, he, you know, you, you've, you've met many of him in your life, many, uh, uh, energy vampire energy vampires in your day-to-day -day life that you know getting a chance to play one has been uh, uh, pretty fun that's great well mark um one of the staffers at paste um had turned me on years ago to Kay strauss <laughs> and it was only recently that i put two and two together that that was you can you just talk a little bit about that early phase of your career and, and the stunts you were pulling? Yeah, I don't know if it was uh, part of the career. Um, <laughs> it was, you know, I, I was just, I was living in Milwaukee at the time and I was bored and uh, a friend of mine, uh, Joe Pickett and I came up with this idea to um, take this dumb guy character that I always did just around my friends and book him on morning shows as this idiot yo-yoist and um, without the morning shows knowing that I was playing a character. And so I would get on and then talk about, you know, my, my character was this uh, guy that was going around the, the Midwest, going to schools to teach kids about the environment through his yo-yo tricks. Well, obviously that's asinine. And uh, so when I would get on the morning show, I would basically just make a jackass of myself. Uh, because I can't yo-yo, I don't like yo-yoing. Um, and yeah, so after that, the uh, the writers of The Office saw it. Um, people started uploading it onto YouTube. And uh, about a month after I started doing that, 
they called me and flew me out to meet with the writers. And a month after that, I was on the show. So it making a jackass of myself finally paid off, I guess. So. <laughs> There's a lesson in there somewhere. There, for, there is, yeah. Sure it is. yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the show's sets are just these ornate um, Victorian house that you live in is the, is the main place, but also the other places you've gone have been very just beautifully production designed. What is it like on set to be doing this ridiculous vampire show at, as actors and showing up to, to work at the house? I, I think it's I, every time we go to set, you know, Kate Bunch has done an amazing job with that design that I find something new every time. Um, I get excited when we get a new room, like this season, um, we introduced um, a new room. And last year, did we introduce the, the fancy room last year? Was that the first season? Because we didn't have yeah. a pilot. Yeah, it wasn't in the pilot. Yeah, it wasn't in the pilot. And so when we got to set the first season, we had this brand new fancy room or the living room, which was beautiful and so detailed. I think. At one point, Mark, you picked up a book and the book was from like 1892, like an original yeah. copy. Like the details are crazy. Yeah, the details are, are really incredible. And you you know, I, being on other shows, you, you don't really feel at home when you're on set. You don't feel like this could be a house or uh, like on the office, you know, the, the panels would be removed. It, it, it looked like an office, but you, in the in the mansion in the vampire mansion i mean it really feels like a home and especially when they have the fireplaces going and it's cold and snowing outside in uh, toronto and uh, you're you're indoors on a really nice sofa you you really feel like you um, you, you embody that character and the the set really helps that a lot that's great well it just struck me i I talked to Jermaine Clement um, when the show was launching, and he talked a little bit about the origin of this whole world, which was a stand-up routine that um, he and another comic did, and then brought in Taika Waititi for the the movie. And um, it just reminds me a little bit of like Kay Strauss, you know, just doing this ridiculous thing because he would have a heckler as a vampire, like heckling him from the audience on his set and they would get into this ridiculous argument and that was sort of the the way that all came about so it's fun that you know these little weird um just get up and and try something and what that can eventually become um i love the uh parallel there so that's very cool yeah i you know i i when people ask me you know younger actors or comedians ask me like what should i do what should i be doing and you know it, it's hard to tell them that you know I, I fell backwards into this because i wanted to make my friends laugh and uh -huh. jermaine you know fell backwards into this concept somewhat by going on stage and just goofing around with one of his friends you know um and as much as i hate the term but this organic you know it, it came out of just just wanting to have fun and not worrying about well will this get me on tv will this get me traction in hollywood the last thing i ever thought would happen is i would end up in hollywood i mean that i wasn't an actor i wasn't pursuing it in any way and you know i just again you you, you just kind of have to get off your ass sometimes and do some things and it can pay off i guess um, Harvey, you've been doing this since you were pretty young. Can you talk about a little bit about your journey to getting here with Guillermo? On that question. <laughs> Sorry, I, it actually did go down the wrong tube. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, I mean, I started doing theater when I was pretty young. Um, I wanted, I know I wanted to be an actor and I was, I guess I have the opposite of Mark story. I wanted to be an actor when I was little, and my parents wouldn't let me because they didn't think that was a profession that was uh, dignified. And they, wow. it's not. It still isn't. 
Um, but I was so persistent. I just remember watching Annie, a musical on TV, because I thought it was a TV show, not a movie, because um, I don't know how things work. And I told my mom I wanted to be that. I wanted to be an orphan. And she looked at me weird and I said, no, I want to be that. And it's like, oh, they're actors. And I was like, oh, I want to be an actor. And so I just remember that for me, it was like, it wasn't an option because I, I didn't come from like, you know, a family of wealth and privilege. So I couldn't take acting classes. And I remember asking for uh, money to take a improv class and they couldn't afford it. My parents um, being the son of immigrants and they were just working just to get by. I had to like collect cans out of trash cans to pay for my first improv class. And so I oh, wow. looking back, I was like, I really wanted to do this. So then I was like, I must have had something in me that was like, I, either a distraction of like what life was being like at the moment, just like full straight ahead, like, okay, this is what I want to do. And then kept doing it. And then weirdly enough, I booked this in the most weird, uh, untraditional way. I went to a wine and cheese night and I met someone there who recommended me for the role. Oh, wow. Well, that's very cool. Well, it's so good to have you both here. Um, obviously, like everybody, you guys have been sort of stuck at home. Um, you were in kind of a weird cycle for actually now having the show come out. So that's, I know, better than having to shut down the set that you were on. You actually got the season filmed. But how has it been at home? Um, where would you be now if, I mean, was there work things that were getting canceled? Or, or would you, where would you um, be doing right now if you I, went I was home? filming actually up until the week when the shutdown in LA happened and I was in New York, which is probably not the best place to be at the time. Um, but we were upstate and um, in the Catskills and we just finished and we wrapped and the day that we wrapped and I flew back is on a Thursday, I flew back and that Friday, all the bars and um, kind of the small businesses started closing in LA. So it was like the perfect timing in a way. Like I got back and I was like, oh, and then it shut down and been home ever since. There were a couple of things that I was going to do. Like there was a couple cons that we were gonna get to meet some fans and whatnot that had to be canceled obviously for obvious reasons. Um, but that's pretty much it. I, I kind of got that film in the can right before it all happened and then got to go home and uh, quarantine. How about you, Mark? Um, no, I haven't really uh, been filming at all. I'm kind of taking the uh, little break. And, you know, I'm just doing little projects around the house, little things that I've put off for a long time. So. so one thing we ask everybody when they're on is what is that piece of art that is getting you through this time, whether that's another TV show, a book, an album, a series of films, whatever it is? Um, you know, music's a, a very important part, I think, of everyone's life. And, you know, we turn to it for different moments in our lives, wh whether we're sad or happy or what have you. And at this point, it's every single emotion at once, it feels like, and days meld into one. Um, as far as TV, I'm, I, I really am addicted to this HBO show, My Brilliant Friend, which is absolutely astonishingly just fabulous. Uh, the acting, the writing, it's incredible. It's Italian, it's really beautiful, and I, I think it's a, a step above what's out there right now. Well, that's been on my list, and I have not watched it yet, so that is good to know. I, I need to move it up the list. How about you, Harvey? Um, I've been watching some documentaries for me. I've um, been really watching a lot of uh, queer documentaries. Um, uh, Circus of Books was one of them that I just saw on Netflix that was really cool, produced by Ryan Murphy. Um, yeah, I think that's the last thing I saw that was kind of a real eye-opener just into the history of uh, queer culture. So I really enjoyed that. So. With what we do in the shadows, can you talk a little bit about what it's been like to um, work with Jermaine Clement, work with the rest of your cast members? What is the feeling like on set? I, I love it. I mean, I, I, I never met them before the pilot. And the first interaction I had with them was when they actually called me on the phone um, to offer me the role, like after I had gone to the audition. 
so I never really met them in person until the, the first day on set. And I didn't know what that was going to be like, you know, working with different people. Everyone's different. The chemistry and Jermaine and Tyke are so different um, in their directing and their personality. So like getting to like get into the vibe of things was nice. And um, I, I love working with both of them. They're, they're great people. Yeah. And, you know, like Harvey and I were talking early on, we were, you know, kind of the only American actors on the show. And so, and we didn't know each other. Um, and so there was kind of a camaraderie between all the Brits because they had, they had all worked together and Jermaine kind of knew them from living in England. And, and so it took a little while for uh, Harvey and I to just kind of feel at home with everyone, but obviously that, that comes along. Um, on set, we have a lot of fun. I mean, I know that's cliche, but we do, we do laugh a lot. Uh, there's a lot of improv on the show. Um, and it's always interesting to see, you know, whether it's Harvey or Kayvon or Natasha or Matt will come up with something that you were really not expecting at all and it'll bust us up. So it's, it's a great, uh, it's a great set. Yeah, the chemistry between just the characters on set is like undeniable. Like I've never been on a set where everyone just bounces off each other so well or, or gel so well. It makes it cohesive, I guess. And it's nice because you, you never have this fear of like, is this going to work? Like I never go to work. Um, you know, it's like hot potato. No one's ever going to drop the, the hot potato. It's like the game can go on for hours. And we've had takes that go on for 28 minutes for one scene that should be about 15 seconds long but we can go for a while and uh, we'll never see that footage. Like we'll never see, you know, 27 minutes of that, but we will see one minute of it. And, uh, but it's good to know that you have, you know, your cup runneth over when it comes to like working with the, with creative people like this cast, cause it's, you'll never have a lack of talent. Like that's for sure. And we do play hot potato quite a bit. Yeah, that's how we start the mornings off. Yeah, and that, and that can run for hours. Well, we get called to the set at 5 a.m. We play hot potato from 5 to 8. Then we go to makeup and hair. So then, yeah. That's a long time to be playing hot potato. So Don't can, drop you, explain, it. Don't can you explain to everybody what, what happens during that time? So hot potato is a game. Oh, Mark, do you want to, the rules are pretty simple. Do you want to? Yeah, I mean, you, it, they pull out a hot potato from the set oven and we just throw it around and you know, it's it's a lot hotter right when it comes out as opposed to a couple hours in, then you're just throwing a potato. Yeah, then it cools down, so we have to get the backup potato. You need, you need a lot of potatoes uh, to really- Most of our budget goes in three hours. Potatoes. potatoes. Yeah, we have a budget for potatoes. So. Fortunately, FX is, has, is known for really providing the produce on set, so- <laughs> They lead the back. campaign on potatoes. Yeah. They have a hell of a potato budget. So when all of this is over, uh, what's next for the two of you? Do you have anything lined up that you're excited about, um, or either personally or professionally, to get to go do? Um, you know, I, I'm looking forward to just seeing friends again uh, in person, um, and like everyone, and you know, not being terrified every time something comes to the door. Um, Professionally, you know, I have a couple scripts that I'll maybe start pursuing um, after afterwards. But as of right now, you know, I, I I'm not really motivated to do much of anything other than. Well, you gotta have news. a backstory on Mark. Like Mark is really like he's like germaphobe when it comes to stuff like that. Like I <laughs> I kept thinking about you, Mark, this whole time. I was like, he must have. <laughs> you're having a field day right now because this is like your biggest nightmare like right, right now he's really good about keeping things clean like on set and like i just can't imagine like this must be like terrifying right now yeah i i don't leave too often <laughs> uh, so uh how about you harvey any thoughts of where I'm, you'd like to be i'm just looking forward again same thing as mark i'll piggyback on that that to, look, to see friends, you know, and to see um, not taking things for granted that before we're just a drive away or, you know, uh, it's not the same, you know, FaceTime is great and whatnot, but, you know, we're human and we're meant to connect to other humans. And so I'm looking forward to that. 
and work-wise, I'm just looking forward to, you know, continuing to uh, work on this, you know, for another season. Hopefully this all pans out in time and it all works out that we go to shoot season three. Fantastic. All right, well, we're going to bring in uh, Ben Nichols from Lucero here. Let's see. And uh, hey, Ben. Hey, guys. Hey, so uh, every episode we like to, in the middle here, just uh, raise a glass to the people that are um, keeping us safe. So I'd love to go around and everybody just say somebody they'd love to toast. Right. Um, I'll start us off with um, the folks running uh, Music Cares and what they're doing for musicians. Um, right now is a time of desperate need of so many musicians, and we've got a little donate button on our side here for anybody who can is in the position to be able to do that. Um, but I just want to raise a glass to the people who day in, day out are working towards making that happen and taking care of folks when they're in need. So to the folks at Music Cares. Music Cares. And by the way, I'm drinking a Bloody Mary in honor of you, Harvey and Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good choice. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, Mark, who else should be raising a glass to today? Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to raise a glass to the ASPCA, and I know it's not uh, corona related, but it, it is in that they continue to do incredible work in an even more challenging atmosphere than ever. And uh, they're really an outstanding organization and should be applauded for that. Great. ASPCA, let's drink to that. Harvey, who else should be toasting to? I think to obviously all the first responders and uh, feedingamerica.org for. Um, you know, keeping kids fed and families fed during this hard time. Can't imagine what it must be like. Um, so help if you can. So cheers to them. Cheers to them. I'm actually against feedamerica.org, so I'm not gonna drink. No, I'm joking, I'm joking, please. <laughs> He's single-handed Feed America. <laughs> ben, who else should we be testing to? Um, those were all good choices. Uh, I'm going to toast to, I got three kids in the house, and um, it's tough enough being a 15-year-old, you know, in regular times, uh, but being a 15-year-old during all this mess, uh, being a teenager, or my three-year-old, um, she uses, you know, she doesn't know why she can't go visit her grandmother, you know, play with friends, and she knows the word virus. Um, so it's tough on the kids, so, you know, let's do one for the kids, too. One Cheers. for the kids. Drink to those who can't drink with us. Exactly. Great. Well, Harvey, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. And um, best wishes to you guys. Best wishes to what, um, what we do in the shadows. Everybody should be watching. If they're not, um, it is just a hilarious show. And that's in large part thanks to the two of you. Well, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, Ben, I've got, to, I've got us on the other screen here, and I've noticed it's lagging a little bit, but we will have the full audio ready to go as soon as this is done. It's all recording. So cool. We'll, anybody who's out there and um, the sound's not great for you, it'll be great for you here. So. Yeah, I was watching on the iPad, and then you clicked me on here on the laptop and then I couldn't turn my iPad off fast enough and I tried to throw it out the door <laughs> but I could still hear it through the door and then I had to go tell my oldest to turn it off and yeah sorry it was a mess but like Technology. you said we'll, be, we'll fix it all in post hey <laughs> we are in the the zoom live stream era there's just going to be issues and yeah, and yeah. We will roll with them exactly so Ben Lifelong Memphis guy, you're now in Ohio. Um, yeah. How are you liking your new hometown? Man, I'm out in the woods, uh, about 20 minutes outside of Akron, um, and I'm nobody can find me up here. So it's a, 
it's nice. I can hide out and um, just it's full family time when I'm here. In Memphis, you know, I've lived there for 20 years. I'm from Arkansas originally. But um, Memphis is home for Lucero and all the other guys are basically from there and they're all back in Memphis. But I quarantined with my wife and daughters. They're, my wife's from up here, so that's how I ended up in that, out in the sticks in Ohio. But it's, it's a perfect place. We got a, enough land to not be too crowded in. Um, yeah, it, we're actually lucky and we're pretty comfortable during the quarantine. Did you go? Uh, what's that? <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, I think there's a lag. I apologize. <laughs> uh, no problem. So, um, but you were back in Memphis. Well, that's where the band is. That's where you recorded your last record at yeah. uh, a pretty cool studio there with Sam Phillips. A very historic cool uh, place. Yeah. So, um, tell us a little bit about recording that last record. Yeah, our last record was Among the Ghosts, um, and we did it at Sam Phillips, which is a, it's the studio that Sam Phillips built after he sold Elvis to RCA. Um, and so Sun Studios, which everybody knows, um, that was getting too small. And so around 1959, 1960, he built Sam Phillips. And he built it from the ground up uh, as a studio. So he got to do all these crazy ideas, uh, like cave-like sound chambers and reverb chambers and all sorts of crazy stuff in the walls. And he was kind of a mad genius uh, with sound. And the building kind of reflects that. And it's exactly the same as it was in 1960. So it's uh it's a it's like a time warp it's a it's a really cool place to go on the court well i know you guys are road warriors um you're playing just tons of shows a year how has the last couple of months been of, of being at home and off the road and right uh, it's it's been a while since you've had an extended not playing anything right it's true um we got lucky we were on tour the first couple months of the year. So on March 12th, we ended a, uh, a month long tour. Oh, wow. uh, so the timing was good for us. Um, we've had to cancel all the shows this spring and in the summer. Um, and yeah, we don't know, maybe we'll get back to work in August. Uh, we've got some stuff booked in July, but uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, and you don't know. And if there's a second wave, you know, by the time all the stuff you've booked for the fall comes around, if there's a second wave in October, uh, what do you do then? Um, so yeah, everything in this industry is definitely up in the air. Um, so right now we're just kind of uh, coasting by. We're supposed to record a new record, so I've been using my downtime to try to write new songs. Um, and yeah, and take care of my three-year-old kid. Uh, uh -huh. She takes a bulk of my time. My wife works from home, um, so I spend most of my time playing with a three-year-old kid and then trying to squeeze in songwriting in between uh, breakfast and lunch and cartoons and going and playing on the trampoline. Well, we appreciate you joining us here for this. So yeah. uh, before we get to the first song, I have to ask, do, do you have any details about what this album's going to be like or where it's going to be recorded or when it's going to be recorded? Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to go back to Sam Phillips and work with the same producer named Matt Rossbane. He's a Memphis kid. Um, and he's been doing really well. He recorded the last John Prine record. Um, and he's won a Grammy with Jason Isbell, working on one of his records. Um, so we're, we've got good people, and Sam Phillips is a cool place. Um, so we're going to do it kind of like we did the last record. Um, maybe a shorter time frame this time. Um, because I've got so much time to work on the songs now, maybe I'll go in a little more prepared for this one. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to be about. I struggle every day with lyrics. I've got all the music, um, but the lyrics are the tough part. They take. Uh, they can take months to write sometimes. Um, the song I'm going to play right now is actually a really old song. Um, I, I wrote it for one of my little brother's films. My brother's a guy named Jeff Nichols, and he's made a few movies, five actually. A few great movies. I love Jeff and Nichols, by the I'm way. I'm a big fan. He's uh, really talented. And this is something I wrote for uh, a movie called Take Shelter with Michael Shannon, um, and you know, which is apocalyptic in certain ways um so i thought it might be appropriate <laughs> uh -huh, and, uh, absolutely and some folks online were asking for it i don't play it much so um this is an older song just uh kind of a, a deep cut 
Um, you want to see how it sounds? Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, this is Shelton. I see those strong clouds rolling in. It's like I knew it would be again. And that sky new today. The shelter's still so far away. Oh. See that look there in your eyes Reflecting more than those dark skies Time to think on what's been lost Move along and lose it all Oh I don't know just what we'll do I don't know just where we'll go. All I know is you gotta move. All I know is to keep you close. close. Keep you close. Never been like this before. Storm to match a paler horse. Water's red, the sky's black. Take my hand, that don't look back. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know just what we'll do. I don't know just where we'll go. All I know is we got moved. All I know is to keep you close, keep you close. All I know is to keep you close. All I know is to keep you close. All I know is to keep you close. Oh, it's so good to hear that song. So, Ben, I have to admit, I was today years old when I realized you were Jeff Nichols' brother, um, like getting ready for this. And I've met your brother. I've seen most of his movies. Um, I've heard your your music in his movies and somehow never made that connection, so. Yeah, he's uh, nice enough to still include us. Um, we did a lot of work on Mud uh, yeah. with David Wingo, who does most of his scores. Um, so we were in Mud quite a bit, but usually I get to write a song for the end credits, um, which was what Shelter was. And uh, there's one on the new record, the Among the Ghosts record called Loving, mm-hmm. that I did uh, for the movie Loving. Um, and that's one of my favorites. That's a really, that's a good one. Um, but uh, yeah, he's got a lot of irons in the fire. He's working on some new projects. Uh, I always enjoy getting phone calls from him. Uh, he's, he's always got great ideas and the projects he's working on are exciting. So he's got good stuff coming out. That's fantastic. So as you're in Ohio and the rest of the bands in Memphis, do you feel like you're able to stay connected to bandmates, but also friends elsewhere and the world at large. Right. Um, it's tough. It's, uh, it is being isolated like this is a a blessing and a curse. Um, the whole last record actually is about how much I miss my family when I'm on the road. 
Um, and so, you know, I got my wish. I get to go home and just do nothing but spend time with my family. Uh, I got what I was wanting on that record. Um, but, but yeah, it's the other half of my life, uh, which is the band, uh, is, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It is tough to connect. Um, I'm writing demos and trying to upload stuff to, you know, SoundCloud or drop so that they can hear them to expect when I do get to town. I was supposed to go down May 1st and we were supposed to start recording, but uh, that was just cutting it a little too close. It was a little too sketchy. Um, so hopefully we get to start June 1st. Um, it'll just be, you know, the five guys and then the engineer and producer. So it won't be a whole lot of people, but we'll see what we'll see what the studio says. Um, I would love to get to work on June first. Uh, I know all the guys are are feeling the same way. We're just ready to get back together and get back to work. Um, and these new songs are exciting, so I can't wait to get in the same room and and really hash these songs out and turn them into Lucero songs. Oh, that's great. Are you going to play us a new song? Or are you going to play us another something old? I was going to play something old, but now I kind of feel like playing a new song. Um, let me, I'm going to, man, all right, I can't decide. <laughs> Can we do both? We got time. We got time, are you sure? Yeah, we'll do all a third. Right. All right. Great. I'll do a new one here. This one's called The Match. Um, I don't know. I stole the idea out of this old folktale, but kind of updated it and blah, 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 blah. Um, we'll see. It might not even make the record, but... I've played it here and there online. We'll give it another shot. Um, it's called a match. Thanks for letting me do this. Absolutely. Oh, it's so new, I don't know it. All right, we're playing an old song, actually, called Hey Darling, Do You Gamble, is what we're going to do, because I haven't learned the new songs yet. Um, if you haven't been to a Lucero show, something like that has to happen at every show. <laughs> well, it, just, it does. Feels like a Lucero show, or just a just a sweaty rock show in general, where it's like this is loose and fun, and we're gonna this roll with everything. You can get unfortunately right now, but um, yeah, I'm gonna stick to something old that I I don't know if I know it any better, <laughs> but uh, I might mess it up too. But uh, this is what I was originally planning on doing, and so maybe I should just stick to that. Um, this is called Hey Darling, Do You Gamble? Um, I stole this, that line from a, one of the first movies Jeff Nichols worked on at a film school was this Towns Van Zandt documentary called Be Here to Love Me. Um, and they interview Towns Van Zandt's third wife. Uh, and she tells the story about the meeting. And um, apparently he walked up to her at a bar and said, Hey Darling, Do You Gamble? And I thought, oh man, that's perfect for a song. I don't think it's in any of his songs. So I'm going to steal it uh i'm gonna use that so thanks to jeff working on that film and me seeing that documentary in towns van zant having such a great pickup line uh this is hey darling d gamble hey darling d gamble I'm running against the ad track. I'm taking all that I can. Now, now, for looking back. Now, I believe it's wrong with me for a while. Well, now I believe she's wrong with me Until this Texas sun will fall to the sea If I shed this skin of iron and this breath of kerosene Oh, darling, would you take a chance on me? Well, there's no map that shows where I'm going. 
I can't say just where I've been. But with you, girl, by my side, Lord, there ain't no game that I can't win. Now, heavenly, just run with me for a while. Well, now I believe she's wrong with me till this Texas sun falls into the sea. If I shed this skin fire, this breath can't see. Darling, would you take a chance on me? And I know you don't know what odds I got. But intuition sure counts for a lot. Now you look me square in the eyes more than once tonight. Thinking you and me will make it just fine. We'll make it just fine. Hey, darling, do you gamble? Well, I'll be your gambling man. And now we'll take a hard weekend. We'll never look back again. Now, have a lean. Oh, it's wrong with me. Well, now I believe she's wrong with me for a while. Well, now I believe she's wrong with me until this Texas sun falls into the sea. Fashion this skin mine and this breath kerosene. Darling, would you take a chance on me? I said, darling, would you take a chance on me? Hey, darling, you again. Oh, I love that story and I love that song. That's amazing. <laughs> Such a good pickup line. <laughs> hey, darling, do you gamble? Yeah. So it looks like you're in your music room there. Do you have a space for making I stuff? Do, um, in Memphis, you don't have in, you don't have basements. Um, but up here in Ohio, uh, in the Midwest, everybody's got a basement. And uh, luckily enough, this house when we bought it had this little office built, and my wife was nice enough to give it to me. So now I kind of have the bedroom I wished I had when I was you know 16. Um, decorated pretty much the same as it would have been then. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's kind of my hideout, and I get to, I get to come in here and yeah, work on demos and just hide for a little bit. Um, not for too long. The the three year old will come and find me when she's when she's ready. But, <laughs> I bet. But she likes to play drums and she'll play guitar and she'll sing and ah, that's the best. Uh, yeah, she's not afraid to pick up a microphone and just start building it oh, out. I love anymore. that. That's fantastic. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, it's 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 fun, and so I can't wait. I want to, you know, I can't wait for her to start a band one day. Maybe I, uh, you know, it's like I'll play drums for you. Yeah, let's just let's do it. Um, and the fifteen-year-old that I mentioned earlier, it's tough being fifteen. She's upstairs, uh, and she writes songs on the piano, uh, and she's a really good singer too. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of. It's not lonely, and it's not quiet here in quarantine. Uh, there's a lot going on in this house, so it's. Uh, I don't know. We're lucky. We're, we're real lucky. Well, we'll be looking for that Nichols Family Band album coming out. One day. One day. That's amazing. So one thing we ask everybody on this show is just what is the piece of art that is helping get you through this, whether that's TV show, book, uh, album, something that's just fun and distracting or is really speaking to you right now? Man, it's um, the book I've been reading lately. I was doing an interview with my friend Corey Brennan, 
and we were talking about songwriting, and he mentioned this book. I don't know. This isn't exactly what you're talking about, but it's this, this Paul Zolo, the songwriters on songwriting book, uh -huh. with interviews from everybody, you know, Bob Dylan and Tom Petty and Randy Newman. Um, and I was ashamed that I'd never read it before, so I ordered it on Amazon. And I've just been delving into this, which I'm trying to write songs right now for a record. And so I don't know if this book is, is helping or... <laughs> when I quit uh, I'm like oh okay. um, but it's keeping me distracted and it's getting me through quarantine so um, yeah I'm enjoying it it's a, it's a, there's a lot of good stuff in there that's fantastic so um, I know a lot of what you do and just such an important part of uh, your job is that getting up on stage and feeding off the audience and having that relationship how are you handling not being able to do that? And uh, what are you most looking forward to about finally getting to do that again? Ah, man. Um, yeah, that's one of the good things about being in, in a band is you get fairly immediate reaction to your you know, creative output. Uh, you know, if you make a painting or write a novel, um, you don't get that you know, crowd reaction uh, necessarily. Uh, that you do with rock and roll music uh, or live music of any kind um, and so yeah I do I do miss uh, getting up on stage and uh, you know especially when folks sing along oh man it, it's good for this all it makes you feel like you've done something right for once and um, so yeah I miss that quite a bit um, but yeah I just I miss hanging out with my band members and uh, I miss uh I don't know, seeing all my friends across the country. Um, that's the other good part about being in, a, being in a band is you get to travel a bunch and you get to know folks here and there and all over the place. Um, I don't know, I, I'm fairly optimistic. I think, uh, I don't know when, but we'll obviously we'll do it again one day. And uh, so yeah, I just, right now I'm trying to use my time best as I can uh, and take advantage of being at home. Um, I might feel kind of silly singing all the Among the Ghost songs that are, you know, all these sad songs about how I miss my family. Uh, when I go back out on the road, it's like, well, well, you've had your family now. <laughs> you gotta see them. <laughs> so yeah, so you gotta see them. You got your wish. Uh, welcome back to. It's time for you to come back and see us again. So, one day, I can't wait. Oh, that's great. Well, when that day comes and you come through Atlanta, we'd love to have you in the Pace Studio. Do this in person um, with the full yeah, band, you. and um, that'll be just a, such a great day. It will be. Yeah, uh, we'll make it happen. And yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah, uh, it'll be nice when things get uh, closer to normal, at least. Um, but yeah, yeah, we're just doing doing what we got to do right now. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of being a dad and um, writing new songs for the new album and coming to do this for us. This was so much fun. It's my pleasure. And I'm a huge fan of what we do in the shadows and so i gotta go back and rewatch that interview with those guys because uh i love the movie original movie and i love the show it was uh they do such a great job so thank you for letting me be part of this episode in particular it was super cool absolutely all right thanks so much bye, man. Man. bye. take it easy